It's the Thursday evening edition of the Valley's Most In-Depth Weather Forecast video. We call it Weather for Weather Geese. We're coming up on the 10th anniversary of this video, which debuted sometime in the uh, spring of, of 2013. We've been doing it for almost 10 years, and uh, our audience has grown, so I appreciate everyone who tunes in, whether you're watching on my uh, on my blog, ericwfmj.com, or most, most commonly on my YouTube channel. Really appreciate everyone following along. We like to look at geeky stuff like this, like a temperature trace over the last 31 days. No surprise, of course, it's been way above average temperature-wise over the last month or so, with just a handful of cooler-than-average days around the end of January and the very start of February. But since the, uh, what, the 5th, we've been above average every single day, at least in terms of those high temperatures. And because of this, and because we're not alone in this, uh, things are beginning to bloom a good three weeks ahead of schedule. As far north as Washington, D.C., Baltimore, up towards the Philadelphia area, even in parts of West Virginia and Kentucky, we're th seeing things greening up ahead of schedule because uh, February has been much more like March. That is for sure. And we've got kind of a March-like national radar uh, this evening with thunderstorms not far to our south down across West Virginia where there's been some flooding problems. We also have an ongoing severe weather threat this evening from the Nashville area down towards Birmingham and into the southern parts of Mississippi as well. Closer to home as of about 7.10 p.m. Uh, we've had a long break from the shower activity over the last handful of hours. I think some of us are going to get wet though as we head towards mid-evening. This is not much, but a couple of... Uh, Showers, a little bit of light rain for our mid-Thursday evening. But the Storm Prediction Center does maintain a low-end Category 1 uh, risk of severe weather. We have five categories when we talk about severe weather threats. Uh, you'll see maps like this much more, more frequently, of course, in the spring and summer. But in this spring-like pattern, we still cannot rule out a gusty shower or perhaps even a thunderstorm as we head through the overnight tonight. Pretty strong cold front heading our way. It's coming in the wee hours of the morning. So that's working against the severe weather threat. But because of all the wind energy aloft and the wind shear, we can't quite rule out a noisy shower or a thunderstorm in the wee hours of the morning. You'll see that play out on high-resolution futurecast. We're going to pause this. Let's go back and pause it right around here, about 2 a.m. It doesn't look like much on the radar. And again, I think our chances of anything more than innocuous showers are pretty low. But it's still something that can't be ruled out, that these have a wind component with them. One thing for sure, one thing that is a, a mortal lock, there's cold air behind this front. And it's coming in hard by tomorrow morning with temperatures crashing after the arrival of the front. We'll go from the mid-50s to about 30 in just a handful of hours. And because of the breeze, the wind chill is going to be a factor. So here's a look at the temperatures over the next uh, 36 hours. We go from about 58, probably at about 2 a.m., down to about freezing by daybreak and temperatures won't move. In fact, they'll probably drop a little bit during the daylight hours tomorrow. Warmest part of the daylight hours, probably right at sunrise. We'll spend a lot of the afternoon in the upper 20s. Wind chills will be mostly in the teens. Now, you know, this is nothing unusual for February the 17th, except it was just yesterday we had highs near 70. So this is gonna be pretty harsh. But just like every other cold shot we've had, in the last several weeks and most of the winter in fact this is going to be a pretty brief one it's going to stay cold into saturday morning but by saturday afternoon we'll be in much better shape as far as flurries tomorrow they're going to be out there uh, most of the day just kind of cloudy and uneventful a breezy colder day but occasionally especially first thing in the morning and then again later in the afternoon i think we'll get visited by some flurries might there be a little dusting or candy coating on the grass in some spots yeah, it's possible a better chance perhaps in the primary snow belts but the snow is not going to be much of a story other than the fact that we haven't seen much of late saturday though bright and sunny some fair weather clouds late in the day and despite the cold start we'll get above average in the afternoon right back into the 40s and we'll be above average on sunday as well we'll see some clouds saturday night into sunday morning but i am optimistic that some brightening of the sky will occur in the afternoon as this area of clearing works in during the second half of the day. Temperature anomalies next week until Thursday will not be as extreme as recent days, but I think we've got a very warm day ahead of us next Thursday, ahead of the next cold front. We're kind of in this pattern right now where we get a big warm up and then a cool down during the second half of the work week. So it gets real warm Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, cold front comes through, Friday's colder. I think this is gonna play out again during, uh, during the final uh, full week of February. Hard to believe. Of course, February being a short month, next week is the last full week of the month. So let's look beyond that stretch and head into the longer range. This is the 8 to 14 day outlook put out by the Climate Prediction Center today. So this covers February 24th through March 
the second. The cold will be intense in the west. This is looking like a cold pattern for the Rockies on west. And it looks like a warm pattern for the southeast. And for us, I think we're in between. I don't think it looks particularly cold, but I don't think it looks as like it'll be as warm as it has been. And because of this type of configuration with the temperatures, this looks like an active storm track in between these big anomalies. I think there's going to be plenty full precipitation chances during the end of February and the start of March. Some of this could be snow, but a lot of it's going to be rain. And I wouldn't even be surprised if we had some severe weather threats in this kind of a pattern at the end of February and into March. Because again, this is more like a springtime type of a, of a setup. So we might have uh, some severe weather, early season severe weather threats as we flip the calendar to March. Speaking of March, the Climate Prediction Center did put out their initial March outlook today. This is the map, and it's hard to argue with it. Looking at the data, I've been hemming and hawing a lot about March on this video, how, saying that it's there's a lot of uncertainty. I still think there is a lot of uncertainty uh, for our area, and so it's no surprise that we're kind of in this neutral zone where odds are roughly equal for it to be a warmer than average month, a cooler than average month, or a near average month. All those odds are about the same right now here in the middle of February. Odds are definitely in favor of a cooler than average month in the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies and Plains. Warmer than average favored in the South. And again, we're somewhere in between. I could see it going in any direction at this point. We just are in the middle of a, uh, a sudden stratospheric warming event in the Arctic region. That could result in cold coming south with more frequency in March. Or uh, if that doesn't uh, occur, I could see where the southeastern ridge beats back the cold and March has kind of a similar feel overall to January and February. I could see either solution being right at this point. I do have a higher confidence, as does the, the uh, Climate Prediction Center, in the precipitation outlook. I think there will be an active storm track again during a lot of March, leading to above average precipitation. At the end of February and the start of March, we'll do a, a full spring outlook, a meteorological spring. Of course, March, April, and May, we'll talk about precipitation trends as we head into the growing season. Uh, I know a lot of agricultural interests uh, will be uh, uh, interested, if you will, in that uh, outlook as we go into uh, meteorological spring. And we'll, we'll do that for you coming up in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, thanks for watching tonight. We'll see you back here on Friday.